This is the answer key for the stoichiometry and percent composition test I gave to my grade 11 class. Uh, in the first question I asked, find the molar mass of urea, which has a formula NH2 taken twice with a carbonyl group in between. Uh, so to cal It's a very simple question. To calculate the molar mass, you add the individual molar masses of each one of the elements that compose the molecule. So uh, once for carbon, once for oxygen, two times for nitrogen, four times for hydrogen, total is 60.05565 and we are only allowed five significant figures because carbon only has five significant figures in its answer so the final answer is 60.056 grams per mole. That question is worth six marks. Uh, the second question is what is the percent carbon, what is the percentage of carbon in capsaicin with the formula C18H27NO3 um, so here is the molar mass due to carbon in capsaicin, which is the active principle of pepper. Here's the molar mass of the whole molecule, and we multiply by 100 to turn into a percentage. Again, we're only allowed five significant figures because carbon is limiting with only five sig figs in its answer. That question was worth eight. Question 2a. What is the mass in grams of 7.7 .7 times 10 to the 20 molecules of caffeine with the formula C8, H10, and 402? Uh, here's the number of molecules. Here's the number of molecules per mole, so that tells us how many moles we have. This calculation here tells us how many moles. Then we multiply by the molar mass. Here are the various components. Here's the carbon, here's the hydrogen, here's the nitrogen, here's the oxygen, and that gives us uh, that many moles from this number, that many moles times the molar mass gives us 0 0.248 grams. Uh, we're only allowed three significant figures because the question only has three significant figures. That was worth uh, 10 marks. Each one of the arrows points to what I'm looking for as an element in each one of the questions. B. What is the molar mass of Valium if 0 0.05570 moles weighs 15.86 grams? Um, you'll see from the units, the way the, arrange, the question is arranged, that that's how you find the molar mass. 15.86 grams represents 0 0.055 moles, so the molar mass is 284 grams per mole. We're only allowed four significant figures because the question only does report the uh, numbers to four significant figures. That question is worth four marks. Aspartame is C14, H18, N205. What is its molar mass. How many moles of aspartame are present in one milligram of aspartame? Here's the molar mass of aspartame calculated here. This represents carbon, that represents the hydrogen, that represents nitrogen, this is the oxygen. Here's the molar mass. Notice I don't do any rounding until the very end of the question. Um, that's how we report the answer. But I don't use this part of the answer to continue my calculation. I go back to using the full set of decimals um, one one thousandth of a gram represents one milligram. Divide by the molar mass gives you how many moles. And then we report the answer to three significant figures. 3.40 times 10 to the minus 6 moles of aspartame. Third question. A compound contains 11.66 grams of iron and 5.01 grams of oxygen. What is its empirical formula? We start off with the uh, gram amounts. Divide by the molar mass of each one of the elements involved. So the molar mass of iron is 55.845, molar mass of oxygen is 15.394. Here are the moles represented for each of the elements. We divide by the lowest number of the two, and we, it gives us a ratio 1 and roughly 1.5. So we multiply everything by 2, and it gives us whole number ratio, 2 to 3. So the empirical formula for this substance is Fe2O3, 14 marks for that question. Fourth question asks, what... Is the molecular formula of a substance with the empirical formula CH2 and a molar mass of 84 grams or more? Uh, 84 grams or more. So here's the empirical formula weight: 12 plus 2 times hydrogen gives you 14. The formula weight is 84. We are told here's the empirical formula weight. So when we make a ratio with it, we get 5.988, which is very close to 6, well within the acceptable tolerances for a real-world experiment. And when we multiply 6 by CH2 we get the formula for glucose, C6H12. Fifth question. Aluminum hydroxide 
reacts with sulfuric acid according to the following balanced equation. If 0.5 moles of, of each reactant is mixed, how many moles of aluminum sulfate can form? How many grams of excess reactant are left over? So the first step is to determine which one of the two reactants, one, which one of these two is the limiting reagent. If we have equal number of moles, the one that's used faster is going to be the limiting reagent. In this case, sulfuric acid um, requires three moles for every two moles of aluminum hydroxide. So having equal moles will determine that uh, sulfuric acid will finish first. So we start our calculation from sulfuric acid. 0.5 moles of sulfuric acid. The stoichiometry between aluminum sulfate and sulfuric acid is 1 to 3. So that predicts that we will generate 0.16 recurring moles of aluminum sulfate. And starting from 0.16 moles of aluminum sulfate, we can back calculate to find out that it will use 0.3 moles of aluminum hydroxide. And we subtract that 0.3 moles of aluminum hydroxide from the 0.5 moles that are present, and it tells us that we're going to have 0.16 moles of aluminum hydroxide left. Then we multiply by the molar mass of aluminum hydroxide. Here's the mass of aluminum. Here's the mass of oxygen times 3, and the mass of hydrogen times 3 as well. It gives you a molar mass of 78. So if you have that many moles times 78, which is what we do here, you get 13 grams of aluminum hydroxide left over. So the excess reagent uh, will still have 13.0 grams of aluminum hydroxide left over. This question is worth 20 marks. Each one of the red arrows represents what I'm looking for for each part of that question. The total test is out of 82.